This video covers D3 and SVG paths. The structure of this video is as follows. D3 and basic SVG line shapes. SVG path. D3 path data generator. And the summary. All right, let's get started. D3 and basic SVG line shapes. These are all of the SVG basic shapes. This video covers the polyline, polygon, and path shapes. A polyline is used to create any shape that consists of only straight lines. In the example on the screen, we have a list of points defined. A straight line is drawn from each point pair to the next point pair. Note the spacing between the points. For us to be able to use an SVG polyline, it must be defined inside of the SVG tags. Note, the SVG keyword for the polyline is polyline. The SVG polyline takes in three main inputs. The stroke and stroke width, the same as the SVG line, and the points list of points. A polygon is used to create any shape that consists of at least three sides, which are themselves straight lines. In the example on the screen, we have a list of points defined. A straight line is drawn from each point pair to the next point pair. At the end, a straight line is drawn from the last point to the beginning point to close the shape. The enclosing space is filled with the color specified in the fill attribute. Note the spacing between the points. For us to be able to use an SVG polygon, it must be defined inside of the SVG tags. Note the SVG keyword for the polygon is polygon. The SVG polygon takes in four main inputs, the stroke, stroke width, and a points list, just the same as the SVG polyline, and the fill which is used to fill the enclosing space. D3 is very good at adding attributes and their values to DOM tags. So in both cases, it is very easy for D3 to add in the width and width value, the height and height value, the stroke and stroke value, and the stroke width and stroke width value. D3 can also add in the points and the points value. However, if we look at the list of points, it looks like it is cumbersome to generate a string which contains the points in the correct format. Somehow, we have to be able to convert the my data array into a string that contains the list of points, such that when D3 attaches it to the points attribute, it looks like SVG would expect it. Yes, we could write functionality to take out the necessary information and convert it to a string. Luckily for us, D3 does that for us so we don't need to worry about it. How does it do it? Through SVG paths. The SVG path is the shape to make all shapes. W3 provides the following analogy. Imagine that a pen is put on a piece of paper. The pen will touch the paper in only one point. The pen is moved to another point. The path between the two points can be a straight line or a curve. The curve can be an arc, a cubic Bezier curve, or a quadratic Bezier curve. In this way, we are able to draw any type of shape that we want in SVG. SVG path. The SVG path is the shape to make all shapes. Here you can see how we can use the path to create a rectangle. Here you can see how we can use the path to create a straight line. Here you can see how we can use the path to create a circle using two arcs. The SVG path can make any shape. However, if we look at how it is doing it, it has a D equals and then a long string inside of quotes. These letters are the SVG path mini language. The SVG path mini language describes how to do all of these things. It describes things as simple as a horizontal line, to things as complicated as a smooth quadratic Bezier curve from one point to another. This is an example SVG graphic made with only SVG paths, which tells us two things. One, the SVG path really is the SVG shape to make all shapes. Two, this can get incredibly complicated quickly. Luckily, D3 provides functions that take in data points and output SVG path instructions. D3 path data generator. D3 includes a set of path data generator helper classes for generating SVG path instructions. D3 helps with things as simple as a line and as complicated as arcs, chords, and diagonals. 
For now, we will only look at the d3.svg.line generator. This is simple enough for us to get our heads around how it works, as well as to be able to easily verify that it does what we think it should do. This function takes in the data and generates the necessary SVG path commands. Because it is a line function, it takes in a series of X and Y coordinates. In order to convert our data to the SVG path commands, we need to tell the line path data generator how to access the X and Y coordinates from our data. We do this by providing an accessor function to return the X, Y coordinates from our data. An accessor function is the name of a function that accesses a specific value from the data structure. In this case, for each X and Y combination, we need to provide an accessor function to return the X, Y coordinates from our data. This accessor function will take in the data array that is passed to D3 and extract the set of X, Y coordinates. It will then do a linear interpolation between each point. The result is then passed back to the SVG path as the D attribute. The result is a string of SVG path mini language instructions. Let's look at an example in the JavaScript console. First, we define the my data array, which is full of JSON objects. Each JSON object contains an X and Y coordinate. Next, we define the D3 path data generator function. This will take in the data set and using anonymous functions get the X and Y coordinates. It will then tell the D3 path data generator function to do a linear interpolation. We can see the D3 path data generator function by typing the function name without the open and close parentheses. Let's now pass in the my data array into the line function to see what it generates. The D3 path data generator function generated a string with SVG path instructions from the my data array of objects. Let's copy and paste this string into the next line and add some spaces between commands. Ignoring the alphabet letters, you can see that the data points are still there. The first point is 5, 30, and the last point is 190, 150. The M in the SVG path mini language means put the pen down. The L in the SVG path mini language means draw a line from the previous point to this point. Next, let's create an SVG viewport container that is 200 units by 200 units. We define the SVG container the path will live in. Note that we define the width and height of the SVG viewport container. Now, let's append a path to this container. Note that we pasted in the SVG path the D3 path data generator function generated for us. We put it in as the value for the D attribute. We also give the path a color, a stroke width, and no fill. As you can see, this generated a path line. And that is how we can use the D3 path data generator function to generate a path for us. However, we still had to cut and paste the SVG path mini language string into the command. This time, let's put the named function with the data straight into the D3 attribute operator. We define the data array, the line function, and the SVG container that will contain the path. We put the named function line function with the data array straight into the D3 attribute operator. As you can see, this generated the same line path as before without us having to cut and paste the result of the line function. Finally, let's create this path line using the D3 pattern. First, we define the data, line function, and SVG container. Next, we use the D3 pattern, selection, bind data, append DOM elements and their attributes. Before we press enter, let's look at a few things. One, we are using datum instead of data. This tells D3 that we want to bind the data to a single SVG element. Two, because we are telling D3 we are going to use a single SVG element, D3 does not compute a join on the data. So there are no enter, update or exit selections. This is why the command does an append, 
binds data and then goes straight into defining attributes for the appended DOM element. The rest of the attributes you should be familiar with. As you can see, this generated the same line path as before and we were able to use the D3 data operator. We have now covered three ways to make the SVG path line using D3. Which one should you use? You should use the one that binds data to the DOM element. After all, that's what using D3 is all about, data-driven documents. If we type in d3.selectPath and we click into the interior array and look at the first element, which is the path, we can see that the data property contains an array with each of the six JSON data point objects we passed in. This data is very useful to keep around. This data is very useful to keep around. The other two ways to create SVG path lines do not keep the data around. So this is why you should use the D3 data operator to create SVG paths. And that is the basics of generating a simple SVG path line with D3. The summary. This video covered D3 and basic SVG line shapes, SVG path, D3 path data generator, and the summary.